It's intercepted by Leroy Irvin at the 50. All the way to the 30, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, 5. Touchdown! A 50-yard return. should have both Jackie and me on at the same time because we do our podcast <laughs> together. I know, I know. Huh? We had Jackie on a couple weeks ago. Oh, you did? Oh, that's yeah. good. Mm-hmm. We'll have to it get the both of incredible. you this time. Yeah. yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. Both of us. What's that, Leroy? Here's some things people don't know about you. See, that we, we know you're a great quarterback, handsome-looking guy, you know, Devin there, lived in Orange Park Acres, went to Cal Berkeley, Transferred because Barkas, you and Barkas were fighting out. So you went to Nebraska where you, you know, you guys were like 10 and 1, 11 and 1. You know, kick Kansas that yeah. butt all the time. But, but you know, you, you know, you're Italian. You love the wines. Yeah. You grow your own wine. And you, right. you don't sell it. You give it away to friends. And, you know, I remember coming over there and Jody pairing the wine with the food. Or you pairing the wine with the food. So when am I going to be invited again? Well, you should have came last night because we had the we had the flag Ferragamo flag football league, the directors meeting. You're on, you're in the meeting, right. but you're not there. So anyway, you're yeah. I'm in, I'm in Rosarito Beach. I'm on the safe side of the truck wall. Yeah, I know. So we had we had a built nice ziti bolognese sauce. I brought out the Ferragamo 2019. It was awesome. And then we had a uh, we had a Morlino Descansano. But you know, when Jackie Slater got there, he says, "Are oh, you coming up with all these names?" and I can't even understand what you're saying with all these wines, but man, I'll tell you what, if you don't understand the wines, you they sure taste good. Doesn't matter what you know what the pronunciation. Oh man, they were good. They were good. How many bottles of wine do you think you have in that cellar down there? How many uh, bottles do you have down in that I cellar? Think that we can't we can't take the remote camera and go look at the cellar and bring a bottle of wine out here. I should have known I would have had it in front of me, but it's right around the corner. <laughs> Uh, we, we're a boutique winery, so you know, Leroy, we only have a little space over here in Orange Park Acres, but we grow the Sangiovese and Cabernet, probably about 230 vines, and we probably annually harvest uh, probably enough grapes for maybe 40 cases of wine a year. So it's fun. It's a fun project. It's a lot of work, but, um, you know, maintenance, uh, you got to love the vineyard. If you're in the wine business, you got to love to get in the vineyard and enjoy the, the growing of the grapes. This is what it's all about. Yeah, you know, I know you like have your football. wines down there. What's I know that? you have your wines down there. But yeah. you have some really expensive wines down there, too, that you won't let anyone see. <laughs> I got Stan Kroenke's wine in there. I got Stan Kroenke's wine, the Screaming Eagle. That's like, uh, it's only $5,000 a bottle, but, you know, it's uh, it's in there. <laughs> we haven't drank it yet. I got to drink it. Maybe we can all celebrate one day. So I'll have a glass. <laughs> It'll be fun. No, but then we, you know, I collect wines. Leroy, you know, I, we, we had a birthday party for my daughter a couple of years ago and uh, she's a pediatrician now, but she invited all her friends right. and they came over and we went in the, we went in the cellar. Right. And right. We, we opened up wines and all the girls that, that came, I asked them, okay, we're going to go around the world and we're going to taste wines. And so you just name a place in the world you want to go, and I'll bring a wine from that area. So, you know, I gave them some samples. I said, you know, we got France, Italy, Spain, we got Australia, we can go Northern California, we can go New Zealand, wherever you want to go. And so they started naming wines, and we started bringing out wines from those areas. And I would describe the wine, and I would pour a little bit to everybody, and they would taste it. And, you know, it was kind of of an inspirational knowledge kind of test for a lot of uh, a lot of the people that attended, but it was a lot of fun, and uh, we'll have to do that again. But we went maybe went through about thirty bottles of wine, so it was kind of fun, you know. But there's only eighteen people in there. So tells you, hey, you better be glad I don't live there. That like a good time. I know that there wouldn't be no wine down there. <laughs> I bring all that wine. Yeah, out. You can, you can see. You, this takes the bottle, pours a little bit of wine in there, sips it for a little bit, sips it for a little bit, sips it for a little bit, and leaves the bottle out on the counter all night long. <laughs> Dude, man, leaving the bottle on the counter before we're supposed to finish that bottle. I know, I know. Well, you know what? We enjoy the wine with the food, and that's how it goes, Leroy. You know, it's just like, you know, it, it just know. really boosts up the flavors of the food. So it's really fun, really yeah. good. We enjoy. It. Are you are you a sommelier? Are you a sommelier? Now? Yeah, I'm a sommelier. I'm an entry level sommelier. Yeah, entry level sommelier. All right. 
entry level, entry level. <laughs> what goes into that? Like, how do you, you, you have to go to school for that, no? You go to school. You, you go to school. I, I attended a class. It's a year long class. And at the end uh, of the of the sessions, uh, Michael Jordan, not the basketball player, but Michael Jordan's a master sommelier. He's uh, well known uh, out here in, in the West Coast. And he, he ran the class. And at the completion, you have a test. So everybody's graded on their test. You have to pass a certain amount. You have to get like 75% to pass. So I'm waiting for my results. I'm waiting for the results. And everybody's called. There's two people I haven't been called yet. And I go, God, I didn't make it. And I, what the heck happened? So he goes, well, I, I got to announce the top two finishers <laughs> who got the most, <laughs> who got the most right on the test. And I was one of them. So, I mean, I was like, wow. wow. So then Michael Jordan, Leroy, right after he goes, you're ready to take, you know, I just did the class. He said, no, you're ready to get certified. You got to go and, and do, I said, I'm not ready to get certified yet, Mike. I mean, you know, it's just like, you know, you are, you are. So the next uh, weekend we went to the Napa Rose and they, um, that's where they had the classes. And then we had to do a, uh, a, a, a test, you know, a tasting test. And then they had to ask you questions. You'd have to sit down and a, a master would come up to you and ask you questions about different wines and different pairings and, and that. But you know what, Leroy, I did everything except passing the test where you have to open the bottle of wine and pour it. I mean, I messed it up. I, know. <laughs> I didn't do that the right way. But anyway, it, it was great. I'm entry level. I don't have to be a full level sommelier. So. But it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a great pastime. And. You know, it's a great hobby of mine, so I really enjoy it. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the vineyard yeah, in New York right still, out, correct? Yeah, they're right outside here, and um, they're growing great. Leroy, they just bud sprout. You know, they just bud broke, and they're they're, they're I got to start my uh, my spraying system. We have to spray every two weeks for um, a preventative spray that we that we spray on the vineyard to to prevent mildew and powdery mildew that's very common out here in California. And so if you don't start early, you won't you won't catch up and you'll have to do an eradication spray and it's not fun to do that. But uh we do that and then we have to spray preventatively and um you know, we do that and kind of ma manicure the grapes. Right now we're doing a lot of weeding and getting into the vineyard and making it look good and you know, I I've, I've done uh I did some um some root, um, uh, I don't know what they call it. It's like uh, it's like nutrition for the roots, so that the roots will go deeper and into the ground. And so I I, I don't do a whole lot of supplemental um, treatment to the vines. And I let them go on their own, but um, they find a way to survive. We we lose some of them occasionally, and I have to replant each year a few vines. But uh, it's uh, it's a lot of fun, and they they do pretty well. Cal Southern California is a pretty good spot for growing grapes. You do all that yourself? I do. I do some of the uh, maintenance myself in the vineyard, uh, but I don't. I don't do any of the spraying. I could do the spraying, but I leave that for the professionals. They have a. They have certain uh, techniques. They like to how they have the spray and what kind of um, uh, you know prevention additives they will put in the in the spray. So it's all organic. So it's all safe. But th they pretty much know how to do that. Do you uh, get in there and crush the grapes like the I Love Lucy episode? <laughs> no, we don't. We don't do any of the. You know what we do is when we harvest, we take them over and get destemmed, and that's about what we do. We we uh, we pick them at night because they have to be cool when you pick them, and that's usually in the middle of September. We do that. Okay. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty good, Brian. It's it's um you know it's just uh, it's just a way to have fun and we we get family and friends over to help out my grandson my granddaughter they they all come and they all enjoy it and they do a pretty good job of it we all have like little headsets that we have to wear cuz it's dark at night and mm -hmm. you want to you want to pick the grapes when they're cool and not warm so we pick them at night late at night and then we'll we'll go crush them and we destem them right away and they start fermenting right off the bat so sweet so um I'm sure we'll get into some football at some point, but I would just want to ask, like, where did this idea come from? Is this something you always just wanted to do? Well, Leroy said I'm, I'm Italian. You know, we love our food and wine. And so my wife's Sicilian, so she loves to cook. <laughs> I mean, Leroy, Leroy's been begging to come on over. I mean, I try to invite him, but, you know, he's he's too busy of a, a man. He's all over the place. But 
uh, we got to have you <laughs> over for dinner, Leroy. It's it's good. We got to get caught up. And but um, you yeah. know, it just comes from my background, I guess. You know, the way I was raised, and my mom was a great cook. Although we didn't drink a lot of wine at home when I was a kid growing up, but the Italian families they they like to celebrate uh, in the food and wine and having a good time, laughter and, and music and you know, all that's, uh, that's part of our, our daily life. And we do that. And so it's, uh, it's really good for us to, to get together like that, because I think with, with the wine growing and, and having a good wine, it really adds to the flavor of the food. So it makes the food, uh, taste better. And so we enjoy it. It's, uh, you know, it's a knack of, you know, food and wine pairing. And Leroy mentioned earlier is you have to pair the wines with the food. And it, a lot of it depends on what you're eating, you know, and the characteristics of the wine versus what, what type of food you eat and what kind of flavors you, you have. So they have to kind of marry one another. So, But uh, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy doing that as well. You can't purchase the wine, correct? We have a we have a website, VinceBergamoVineyards.com, that people have gone on and purchased some wines. And we have also have a membership. But it's um, we don't really promote that. But people can go on and, and buy it. We we just like to offer wines for there's some charitable events that I bring to wine and then, you know, some local restaurants, establishments uh, will like the wine and they'll want to order it. And so I bring it to them. And uh, I did send it back east to a couple of good places, good restaurants. Uh, one was Sinatra's. The other one was uh, DePaulo. And they were both in, in Buffalo, New York. And so um, some of my friends are back there. And so they like they like the wine back there. So. We said we'll put that in the in the description. We'll put the links. They want yeah. to check it out. Yeah. Thank you. Be great. Hey Vince, you talk about charitable work though, right? I mean, you have the Vince Ferragamo Foundation. I mean, you do you do a lot of things, man. We don't we're not even gonna have enough time to go over all the things that you do, but your your work with Special Olympics, man, is admirable and, and my hat goes off to you for how you you know, you don't just you just don't show up. And you don't give money. You give time and you give love and you give compassion. And uh, tell us a little bit about the, 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 your foundation. Yeah, Leroy, you're pretty familiar with it. You've played in my golf tournament many years. Uh, we had 30 years of uh, golf tournaments for Special Olympics here in Orange County. And my foundation, um, we wanted to support the developmentally disabled and uh, we did it through the golf tournament. And then after the tournament was over, um, my wife got very involved with uh, breast cancer. She had one of her close friends um, uh, was stricken with, with breast cancer. And so she wanted to do something. And we started, uh, she did a luncheon and did it for 10 years. I raised quite a bit of money in 10 years. It was a wonderful event. And so we, we followed along those lines. So we've been given, you know, for a long time, we still try to help out the Boys and Girls Clubs, the, you know, Special Olympics programs. We're also now we're doing a cornhole tournament. Leroy, this is fun. You should come down for it. It's June 8th. <laughs> it's at our office okay. and it's for the Shine for Good. This company helps um, children who are uh, disabled and, they're, and they have disabilities and they like to fund different things to help those kids. And we're going to do a little cornhole tournament. It's not a golf tournament, but uh, we'll have the pizzas out there and the wine, obviously. And some, I'll be uh, there. Some I'll so be you'll there. have to come. Nate, Leroy, it's at the I'll office. So it'll be great fun. I'll be there. So get you on a team. It'll be a lot of fun. So yeah, we uh, the foundation's a big part of it, and we continue doing that now, Leroy, along with our flag football league. We're starting that up here in Orange County. That should be a lot of fun, too. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Like football, you know, the, the, yeah. It's um the the local university here, the the uh, Santiago Canyon College is a community college, and uh, the the chancellor came to me, and they're starting now to offer women's collegiate uh, flag football as a sport at the campus, and uh, they wanted to do something to promote flag football in the youth side, and then do things in the community. So. Uh, they came to me and I said, yeah, well, we can run the tournament. I have a little bit of experience. And so uh, yeah. <laughs> I got all my guys. I got Leroy and I've got uh, Jackie Slater as the commissioner. And I got, you know, Ivory came. Ivory's part of the deal. And Mike uh, Alexander. Guys, and Leroy's worked with me many years in the past at football camps. And uh, 
So we like to give back. And that's basically the, the stem of this. Everybody wants to give back to the youth. And I think that's the direction uh, a lot of the, the NFL is moving in this direction to help. And then flag football is a sport now that kids can play at a young age. It's non-contact. And it really um, exemplifies the mental approach of football. And uh, we, we want to really see that come out. Um, it's becoming more of a, a passing league now at the at the uh, professional and collegiate level. So we, we train kids at a young age, and I think it's a great time. And also girls play it. The girls, it's really popular with girls now. My nieces play it in high school, and uh, they're they're going to have a, um, uh, a sport in the Olympics in 2028. So it's going to be flag football sport. So I think it's, it's catching on, and we're going to try to develop a really first-class uh, league here in Orange County, and then we'll see what happens. That's really oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So just to talk a little bit about – your NFL career and some of your college career. I heard you before talk about when you initially committed to Cal, you had some other options, Stanford, Nebraska, and then you kind of had some sort of traumatic experience with the actual letter of intent. But could you just kind of tell the viewers what happened with that? Well, that, that's a good question, Brian, because, um, you know, coming out of high school here in Southern California, um, I was recruited to Stanford. I was recruited uh, to Nebraska, to, you know, all the Pac-8 PAC schools at the time, UCLA. I was going to go to UCLA, but at the time, Pepper Rogers was the, the head coach, and he was running the wishbone. So that wasn't my style of football, and so I, I didn't go there. SC was, you know, hot after me to, to get me to go to SC, but I, I ended up going to um, – uh, I, I boiled it down to Stanford – and Nebraska, Stanford and Cal in Nebraska. And so I elected to go to Stanford. I was going to go to Stanford. And so I signed the letter of intent. Uh, and I went to the mailbox with my mom at the time. I was 18 years old and dropped off the letter there. And so I go to school the same day. My brother, Chris, is the head coach. And he's uh, he's in the locker room. And I, I mentioned to him, I says, well, he said, where are you going to school? I said, I'm going to Stanford. He goes, Where'd you go there for? That's the wrong place to go. You yeah. should have went. Cal. That's crazy. I mean, I didn't know I better. You're saying that now. Not only my older brother, but he's my head coach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I said, oh, shoot, I made a mistake. So I get back in the car. I drive back to the post office, which is was in Carson. And I walked up to the lady and I says, look, I need a letter I just dropped off here 30 minutes ago. And she goes, so she asked me my name. I told her who I was. And she gave me the letter back. I opened the letter. I crossed out Stanford and put Cal on it and sent it in. <laughs> so That's incredible. I go to Cal, you know, <laughs> and it was, this was a traumatic thing because, I mean, at the time, it's like, why are they making a decision for me? I got to make my own decision. So I, I learned a big lesson. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to Cal for two years, and like Leroy, Leroy said, uh, Mike White was the coach, and uh, they were uh, they just put us actually on probation that year, so we weren't able to go for the next two years. I would they play in the in the Rose Bowl, which was one of my dreams growing up as a kid here in Southern California. That's why I went to a Pac-10 school or Pac-8 school at the time, and so I decided, well, I can't go to San Diego State. Well, I could, but I, I can't go to any other team in the Pac-8 because I'd have to sit out two years at the time. It's not like the, the transfer portal now, right, Leroy? You can go without sitting yeah, out. Yeah, anywhere. Yeah, so I, I had to transfer to a, a different conference. So I went to the uh, the Big 8, which was uh, at Nebraska, and I wrote a letter, and Tom Oz said, well, if you want to try, you can come here if you want. We'll have to put you on a baseball scholarship. So I went there. I put the – Decided I'm, that's where I'm going. I told Mike he was unhappy about it at, at Cal, so I, I transferred and set out my uh, my first year, and then redshirted that year, and then played two years after that. But it was funny because it was a very traumatic situation. But finally, I learned a big lesson. You know, you it, even at a young age, you got to start making up your decisions for yourself. You can't let anybody make decisions for you. And as a kid growing up, I think everything was made for me, so I, I didn't really really understand that that theory until later in life. But 
when I did go to Nebraska, it was funny, the, the redshirt year, I was intervi- uh, interviewed by Paul Lampley on the sideline. Remember him with ABC? And yeah. Oklahoma saw it, and they they blew the whistle on us. They said, well, he's a redshirt. He's not supposed to be at the bowl game. And I was going to tell them, <laughs> we didn't realize it was illegal to go to a bowl game. Apparently it was. We all we were there just with the team. We were a redshirt. We couldn't play in the game. So they made me ineligible for the first game the following year. So it was another yeah. hurdle I had to pass over. So, uh, <laughs> So we ended up tying that game, and then the next week I came and I started, and and uh, we went on a winning streak. So it was, I was blessed with that, and you know, blessed with people, and playing against guys like Leroy made it very difficult on me to complete pass, passes, but it was fun playing against a guy like that. You know, you guys came into into Lawrence. <laughs> you got, we played him in college. Lawrence, right? Yeah, that's right. We came to play you. That's right. They, who was your running back that, that, that when you were there? Uh, we probably had uh, I am Hip or uh, Tony Davis and and uh, Tony Davis. Yeah, was the Pruitt, was right. Pruitt there with you? Tom O'Leary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, we, we can, when they come to Lawrence and play us. We think you know we're gonna have a game with them, and by the first quarter, man, they're playing their fourth team. <laughs> That's rough. <laughs> Send the game at that point. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to Jayhawks then. It was the uh, you know what? But didn't you have Nolan Cromwell on your team, though, Leroy? Well, well, well so Nolan was on my team the first year in 76. That was his last year. That's right. That was my That's first right. year. That was Nolan's last year. We were eighth in the nation until Nolan got hurt against Oklahoma State. And then we didn't yeah. win another game the whole year. <laughs> he was our quarterback. You know, ran that wishbone, remember? Yeah, you were on the wishbone. I remember. We were on the wishbone, game. yeah. 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 Very common. So you back. tied the first game in, in 75? Yeah. I remember playing against you because I remember this. Lance Van Zandt, who ended up coaching in Nebraska after he left Kansas, just ripped me a good one because we were down like maybe 40 points or 30 some points or something. And you guys are running a little option play. And I was man. supposed to have a pitch, man. I just came and blew up. I, I just came and got her. Got her. Got her. And uh, when I got to the sideline, man, Lance took me out of the game and wouldn't let me play anymore. <laughs> that was their mistake. They should have put you in the game. Yeah. They wouldn't have lost by so many points. Yeah, here we are, like, you know, in real estate. I, was, I worked with Vince in real estate for many years. And, uh, you know, the great guy to work for, a great guy in the community. So it's a pleasure to call you my friend. Even though I try to blow you up. <laughs> well, Brian, Brian mentioned, uh, he, he was mentioning the game, the first game that I came back to Leroy before we played Kansas. We, we were playing LSU. We tied six to six. You right. know, and that was, and I, that was, that was my redshirt game. I couldn't, I couldn't play that game. And, uh, boy, the fans were upset. That was at, that was in Lincoln, Nebraska as well. And I don't know if you guys ever been to Lincoln, Nebraska back in the day, because they used to have balloons, red balloons, red and white balloons. And every fan would hold on one until the score, until Nebraska scored a touchdown or a point or a field goal or some kind of points. Then they let the, the balloons go. So I mean that that was a long wait for that game. Then the following week we started playing. Um, it was Miami, the, the Miami Hurricanes. They came to town, and uh, they were starting Terry Luck, who was a six-year senior quarterback. And uh, for the whole first half, Leroy we were shut out. We didn't score one point. So now right. three quarters, three quarters had gone by. Like four quarters, the first game, and then the first two quarters of the second game, and Nebraska hadn't scored a touchdown yet. So Tom Osborne's walking off the field with me at halftime, and he says, Vince, you're going in the game. We gotta get you in the game. This is it. Let's go. So I said, Well, this is my opportunity now. So that second half we exploded yeah. and uh, they let go of the balloons, man. It was it was it was a big <laughs> thrill. It started, it started yeah. off, you know. That started everything. Yeah. You know, Leroy, we had a lot of we had a lot of talent in Nebraska. Man, I had Bobby Thomas. Well, you did, you did, you did. You did. You did. You had a lot of talent. Man, we had we had we had running back. We had big offensive line. We had great defense. We, right. you know, right. We had some. Stuff. Now, they uh, played good football in Nebraska. Tom Osborne, obviously, with 
this great coaching staff did, did a great job for a long time. You know, I remember when they, you guys, after you left, you get the, the fans are bringing these buses down. They come in buses, you know. And uh, first it was, uh, they had on the, the bumper, the, the banner on the bus was, what is hip? I am. And then, and then after hip was gone, they had, it's fine with red wine. <laughs> That's right. Jarvis so, Red Wine. Jarvis, Jarvis Red Wine was a red back. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know, man. Yeah, they used to. They, you know what they used to have? The Italian mafia out there for my games, Leroy. It, like, <laughs> like, it was like all over the place, man. And the mafia groups coming in town for, the, for my games in Nebraska. That was fun wow. playing for those guys. Those guys, they have been business. You better win. Better play you good. You better win. Yeah. So. so, Vince, what do you think about the NIL? The NIL, that's a good question. You know, the, the name, image, likeness. It's, I think it's ruining sport. I mean, this is my opinion. I, I don't like it in collegiate sports because now it's almost professional. There's no more collegiate, no more amateur sports. And, you know, players are moving from one team to another. Uh, the, 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 some of them getting paid more to stay in college than they make their first year in pros. So uh, it's... It's uh, it's one of the reasons why I think a guy like Nick Saban is stepping out. I mean, stepping down, and you know, they it's hard to win. I mean, you got great coaches uh, around you know, basketball, football. It, you know, it's difficult to establish a program now with NIL with guys getting paid. So it's uh, like, how much money do you have? You know, uh, who do I have to buy to come in here and play? I I don't like it. I mean, just you know, you're already. Go ahead, Leroy. Alabama made $140 million the football team last year. $140 million, the football team. The players. And, you know, and, pro, and, and you know, amateur sports, right? Think about amateur sports, yeah. right? Yeah. The Olympics. All those guys that go to the Olympics are amateurs, right? But they got huge sponsors, Nike, Reebok. All these people are sponsoring those guys to go to the Olympics. And, you know, and, you know, I, know, and I know it's ruining the game of football. But, you know, some of these guys, it's their only chance that they can ever make any money from the game. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the reason why they voted it in, because they they felt that, uh, you know, the players are helped generating all these funds as revenue for these schools, and they're, they're entitled to something. So it's it's almost like a, you're entitled now. You're entitled to earn st- certain things. You know, you're, you're already getting free room and board. You're getting free tuition. You're getting money for books. You know, you go to school to get an education. Now they don't go to school to get an education. They just go to school to play sports. And I, that's not right. Hey, but Vince, I don't, I don't, Vince when, I worked in the real, when I worked in the real estate office, right, you yeah. gave me a free desk, free that's internet. It. You bought lunch right. every day for everybody. You supplied the paper, <laughs> the pencil, and all the stuff we needed to close deals. And I didn't pay you. <laughs> I only paid you when you made money. Still got paid. We closed deals. We closed deals. We still got paid. There I was you know, working on learning how to be a real estate agent, you know, like, okay, I'm a real estate agent, so what? You know, That's but, right. yeah, but I think that, you know, uh, it just, it, it will get out of hand. It will get out of hand. But it, the, the, the problem I have is, you know, uh, you know, Chris Weber, he said the reason he decided to go pro because he had no money in his pocket. He was walking down uh, uh, East Lansing one day and saw his jersey in the window going for $200. And I've been excited this time to go pro. So I think there's got to be some kind of happy meeting. They should get they should get all the students maybe a striping, like you know maybe you know just just some some extra money because some kids come from a poor poor background where their parents don't give them any money. They just basically got the food on the table and that's it. And some kids come from high affluent families, you know, wealthy families, and so they you know it's it's a disparity there. Right. But uh, no, I I, you know, I I can see that point. Leroy, and you know, it's just uh, everybody is has hardship, you know, in their life, and I think, but w- one of the ways to resolve that is through hard work, you know, and just and just working hard at what you do. And some of these guys have come in, and you know what it is. I was talking to some parents the other night. They said they're spending more money on their youth kids, on the kids at young ages. They spent more money over a lifetime before the kid even goes to college. If they didn't spend all that money to get his skill level up. They could have enough more than enough money to put him through college for four years. Well, how about Ryan Lee? He got all that money. He didn't turn out to be nothing. 
Yeah, I know <laughs> that, that, that could happen too. So, you know, I mean, there's an investment. Everybody's got an investment, to, you know. Yeah, for sure. uh, and, yeah. You know, hopefully it pays off. Hopefully it pays off. But some people, yeah, but, you know, when you go to college, you know that they, they get they pay your way there. They get you they get you what you need to to. They give you food every day. They you know they don't help your family now. If you made extra money, yeah, you can send money back home or whatever. You know that's different. But you know as long as you're getting your education, hey, some guys go right from high school to pro, like LeBron James. Yeah, they go right. To yeah, in basketball. To yeah, you can do that. Hey, think about this, Vince. It's, it's, it's evening the landscape. Okay, because yeah. let's say I mean, back in our day, Penn State, Alabama, Ohio State, Nebraska, you know, USC, right. you know, there's a lot of powerhouse schools. And so mm -hmm. you know, they, they were paying, you know, like SMU, and where it came, they were paying money at SMU. I mean, they, they've been giving players money under the table for years at some of these programs. And now the players are starting to be able to get the money on top of the table. Like, like Reggie Bush, they took away his high on trophy for. You know, because his dad got a loan from a car dealership or something like that. So, you know, right. I see what you're saying, but I just think the players deserve some of that $140 million. For sure. Yeah, the school, the campuses do make money. Uh, but, yeah, but I, I just you have to keep in mind the structure of the game. And, and I think the way the way it is, how, how are you going to get great coaching there? I mean, when, you know, you have some of the best coaches that are out there, they're leaving the games. Because they can't they they can't put up with it. It's not pro. So it you've got to know now when you go to college, you're coaching pro pro players. It's just what it is. You got to coach pro well, you know, players. Vince, that, Nick uh, Saban made eight million dollars last year. year. You're a free agency. Nick Saban made eight million dollars last year. <laughs> Who did? Who got Nick Saban? He made eight. His, his contract was eight or ten million dollars last year to coach those kids that are down. That's right. That's right. But you, you made know, that. The plan of opportunity, ago. Leroy. That's what's great about America. When you can work and you, you're, at, you're, at a, you're at a high level, you should get paid for it. You get compensated. For it. Yeah, and so There's these kids no that come out of high school and play sports. college sports, they're at a high level. Look at Vince Ferragamo. Came out of banding. Your dad worked in the, in the, in, in the shipyard. Over there. Enough, he man. went to banding high school. Come on, you know, you get a chance to work your butt off and you get to go to the Cal, you get to go to Nebraska. You put in the work. You've got to put in the work. You got to put. There's no substitute for hard work and work ethic, you know. And I, and I, I tell, I tell it to my grandkids today. You know, when when they're training, I said, you know, hey, you know, it's like you got to go, you got to go, do it, and play hurt. Yeah, sometimes they're hurt. You got to play, suck it up. You know, it's yeah. what it is. You want to do it? It just depends on how bad you want it. What what, what you're made of. Yeah. I mean, uh, some of the great players I've seen today, they have a great attitude, great ambition. They're ambitious. They want to play hard. They'll play through anything. I mean, look at a guy like Patrick Mahomes. He's unbelievable. I mean, look what he's how he rate. He, he can play, he's a pool. He's a sport. Leroy. The other great thing is, too, kids should play all different sports when they're growing up. Right. Okay. Right. Play basketball, baseball. He could have played. He could have went and played professional baseball. He stays mm -hmm. in quarterback. Goes to a quarterback. The great quarterback hey, Vinny, plays hurt. Yeah, but Vinny, Vinny. Patrick Mahomes. Will never be slammed on the turf like when me and Joe Green slam you on the turf. He won't be slammed like that ever. Man, I'm done. He told us that story. Yeah, he told us about the ice cream. Oh yeah, on a practice field. That yeah, was remember. Remember. <laughs> Man, you know it was back. It was different back then. I mean, they you know they they can't touch the quarterback today. Before you could do whatever yeah. you wanted, knock him out. You, you, it was fun. It was fun, though. It's it was. It's always been a fun game, but I I think some of the rules are they're they're adequate. I mean, they're they're good to protect. They're the, adequate. The I, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, they're, they're I agree. But you know, it's it's a great game. It's always been a great game. I just hope they don't. You know, it, but that's where I think the NFL's direction is going back now to youth sports. They're going. They're putting their back their emphasis back in youth sports, and I think that's where the flag football leagues like that will. Will uh, will uh, will uh, will cherish because they people like it. People like it, and it's going to do a lot of good for the for the teams down the road. For sure, Vince. I want to ask a little bit about your NFL career while we still got you. Yeah, um, <laughs> you know, we forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, you're drafted in '77. You know, yeah. and then to the Rams. 
what was that experience like for you? And then especially coming back to California, like from Nebraska and spend some time out there. What was that? Yeah, like? it was, it was great. I mean, I remember the draft day. It was, uh, it was difficult because you, your projections are, you're going to go in the first three rounds or something. And I had to wait till the fourth round, but I was, I was lucky, I think to get, to get selected by the Rams. You know, Don Klosterman was the general manager and, and to come back home, play in front of my, family i think it was uh it was a great thrill to come back to the rams um and you know get a chance and you know i had to start from scratch and work my way up i had great coaching always those those three years at chuck knox at the beginning and then george quick stint with george allen and then ray malavasi came on board coach us in the super bowl and i uh, learned a lot from a lot of guys like lionel taylor but more importantly i think is the um appreciation of the friendship that we were able to develop over the years with guys like Leroy and Jackie Slater and Dennis Hera and Rich Saul and guys that have come and gone. I played with a lot of guys that are no longer around anymore. Uh, but you just cherish those memories and 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 those experiences and they're, they're lifetime experiences. You never you're friends for life, and so it really means a lot. Uh, you know, to get drafted by a team like that because we were a close knit team, and that's I think if you talk to Leroy and ask him. How were the Rams able to go to Super Bowl is because we were so closely knit and we played for each other and we were good friends and we we loved each other and that's how we played. And, um, you know, it was something that you just learned. I mean, it was a respect that we had for each other. And uh, that's what I remember most from the Rams. Great coaching, great players, always great defense. And probably the best offensive line that any quarterback could ever play behind was the one I played. <laughs> that's a good one you had in front of you. They were all pro across the board. Doug France, then Irv Pankey came in and replaced him. Left guard was uh, Kent Hill. is a fast guy on the team. Rich Saul, and then Doug Smith at center. And then Dennis Hara, right guard, and Jackie Slater, right tackle. Hall of Fame Jackie Slater. I mean, that every guy was Hall of Fame. I mean, they were all Hall of Fame style, but maybe all pro for multiple years, all those guys. I mean, I can remember sometimes just, Having a picnic back there in the pocket, <laughs> not to worry about anything. Makes it easy. We were talking to Eric the other day about that great offensive line in 1985. Where were you at? You, you abandoned us. Was... You, you, you abandoned us, yeah. and we played with Dita Brock in the NFC Championship was, game with that great offensive line. Football. He couldn't even throw a slam pattern. <laughs> Where <were> you <laughs> at, Vince? Uh, I should have been with the Rams. I should have never went gone, you know, been left. But, you know, if Carol Rosenblum was still around, hopefully I would have still been around. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. And it's like, I yeah. got to ask you, you're a member of the Italian Sports Hall of Fame. And uh -huh. as an Italian, that's really fucking cool to me. <laughs> what did it mean to you when you were inducted? Uh, you know, uh, Tommy Lasorda was a close friend of mine, and Tommy recommended I, I be uh, on the ballot, and uh, I was selected, uh, I can't remember, 1980, 2002 or something, I can't remember. It was back in Chicago. Uh, it was a great thrill. It was a great thrill to be recognized by, you know, uh, your, your, your heritage, people of your own heritage, you know, and they... Uh, a lot of great Italians were inducted in the Hall of Fame, and I remember going back to Chicago and and having some great fun at the restaurants there, and um, you know, being you know all the all the all the different things they did for the guys back there. It, it was a lot of fun for the family. Uh, just just to be inducted to me, I think you know meant more to me than anything else I could have ever gotten to be selected into that group because I was Italian and because of what I did on the football field. So, uh, but you know, one of the great things, Leroy, I, I met, and it's, you know, a network, it's, it's the way you meet people. I met one of my closest friends uh, that came to me after the game, after the banquet. And it was a, it was a private ceremony for just the Hall of Famers and invited guests. And a guy by the name of Joe Maselli walked up to me, little guy, and he was with his son. And he walked up to me and says, Vince, I got to tell you, he says, I'm so proud of what you did. He says, it's glad to see you and inducted in the Hall of Fame. He says, uh, my name is Joe Maselli. I want you to meet my, my son, Frank Maselli. He said, yeah, we're from Louisiana. He said, from New Orleans. He says, we have, we have an Italian event 
we have our, our Italian event. We raise money for, for our local community. He said, I wonder if you'd be, would you like to come? If we invited you, we'd love to have you come down. I didn't even know Joe Maselli. I said, Joe, I love to come to New Orleans. And if you want to, if you want to invite me, I'd be more than happy to come. So I, I was, I was invited to the <laughs> National Honor to go down there. And I've been going there every year for the last 25 years. And it is, Joe Maselli was the most giving guy. Italian, they have the, uh, her- the Italian heritage there in uh, downtown in New Orleans. And they run a beautiful banquet. They raise money for kids. They give scholarships to kids of Italian descent. And, and uh, just, just, just a great event, great city to be in. And, you know, a lot of the Italians, when they first came to America, they settled in New Orleans. They were the poorest of the poor of everybody. They were farmers. They were in the rice fields. And uh, they worked their way up. And so it was, uh, it was it's a great tribute. It's, it's a great thing to be involved with them. And to look at all the great things that he's done for so many needless families and, and helping everybody he could. Probably one of the most generous guys I've ever seen. Uh, but Joe's, he's passed on now, but Frank's taken over the helm and he's doing a great job. And so if you ever, if you ever make it down to New Orleans, Leroy, Brian, or Jimmy, you know, you got to go say hello to Frank Mastelli and take good care of you. Fun guy. Yeah, I know you were. I know, Vince, you, you took me to Palm Springs one time when I, and Tony Bennett used to always come to your golf tournament and, and, and perform at your golf tournament, right? We had a lot. We had a lot of celebrities come. A lot of time, yeah. A lot of guys would come. Yeah. Leroy and uh, you know Kenny Venturi came. Um, you know we we had uh, Jerry Vale. You know Jerry had one of the best voices of all. He was always at my golf tournament, and to this yeah. day we're still real close friends with his wife Rita Vale when she lives in uh, Palm Springs. But uh, yeah, it's um, you know Leroy. It's just uh, so many great guys. So many great people. You know, Frank. Frank, uh, uh, you know, it's a, a Man Crusoe, great guy, too. I mean, I've mean, met so many great people at some of these tournaments. It's uh, it's amazing. Yeah. Vince, um, I know we're just about out of time, but I want to ask you, um, is there anything else that you want to promote? I know you have your your real estate company, Touchdown Real Estate, and your, your show with Jackie Slater on Point Live. Yeah. Where do people find that? Anything else you got going on you wanted to to promote? Yeah, I mean, uh, we just uh, we're just doing the flag football league right now, and we're getting that off the ground. And you know, we Jackie and I have been doing this on point live, and uh, we've had a lot of fun doing it. We worked together on Fox for five years, six years, and now we're doing an on point live. Uh, we stream uh, weekly uh, uh, broadcasts, and you can catch us uh, on Instagram. Also on dot point dot live through Instagram. And, um, but yeah, if you want to subscribe to watch our YouTube channel, that's great. On point live with Vince and Jackie. That's a lot of fun doing that too. So appreciate, appreciate you letting me offer that. And we talked about my wines and of course, Leroy and I have done a lot of business together. I'm still very active in the real estate business here in Southern California. So we, we call it Ferragamo real estate and, uh, just look us up on the website. So if you're interested in, you need to buy something or you need to purchase or you need some information about real estate, let us know. We'll help you out. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you guys for having me. Hey, also, Vince, don't forget we coached together for your brother at Banning High School. We didn't get into that. We'll get into that next time. Let's <laughs> do it next time.